S&P 43.19 is where it currently sits. 42.84 was the low on the day. Let's bring in somebody who suggests the S&P, in fact, could go below 4,000. Jonathan Krinsky, chief market technician at BTIG. Welcome. It's good to have you on, on the phone. Why do you think we could breach that level? Hey, Scott. Yeah, well, so we've been pretty consistent on your show the last few weeks. There's really two main reasons. One is the internal breadth of the market. Um, and the other is credit spreads. And we haven't really seen much improvement in either of those. And if you look at percentage of stocks in the S&P above the 200-day, it's been pretty consistently below 55% over the last four or five weeks. And that's really a level that, you know, if you stay below there, traditionally you actually see things get a bit worse before they get better. So um, that's one thing we're watching. And then credit spreads, you know, even as the S&P has kind of chopped around in, in a range the last week or so, uh, credit spreads have continued to widen out. And then finally, you throw on the, the surge in commodity prices. We're seeing uh, multi-month moves up in commodities we haven't seen in 30 years. And so, um, you know, they obviously are benefiting certain parts of the market, which is why we, we've seen moves up in the commodity stocks. But, you know, ultimately, that's probably going to have some, some ramifications as well. Well, let me ask you this. What if, and I've, look, I've, I've given Jim Labenthal enough grief today, and I, I don't mean to do it so overtly. Um, I, I think it's worthy of questioning calls to the nature of how aggressive his is, what if he's right? What if there is a solution in a couple of weeks to use his time frame in Ukraine? Does that change the calculus for stocks wholeheartedly? We don't think so. I mean, if, if you look internally, you know, and we've talked about this before, but there's a, a lot of the market peaked over a year ago, and then a lot more of the market peaked in November, December, January before uh, really, Russia, Ukraine came to the front headline. So certainly it could give a, a near-term pop. You know, also the commodity moves, this is not something that just started two weeks ago. I mean, and you look across soft commodities, wheat, corn, soybeans, you know, aluminum, even lumber. Remember a year ago, lumber, people were freaking out about lumber prices. It's almost back to where it was at the highs, and you don't hear many people talking about that. Um, so we think it's bigger than just Russia, Ukraine at this point.